Hi, and welcome back to a fresh week, a fresh year of broadcasting here on Focal Point, the American Family Radio Talk Network. I'm Brian Fisher, your congenial, convivial, and amiable host, as always. Want to wish you a happy new year. Hope you had a very Merry Christmas. My home state of Idaho brought in the new year by dropping a giant potato from the tallest building in town. So New York Times ain't got nothing on Boise, Idaho. The giant potato drop. They're going to do it again next year. Had 30,000, 40,000 people showing up downtown to watch the giant potato drop. Didn't have as much luck, I guess, over in Taiwan. They had a big giant 59-foot inflatable duck. That was going to be a part of their New Year's Eve celebration. That thing blew up about 11 hours before the festivities were to begin. So not everybody had a happy New Year, but I hope that you did. Now, I want to start off as we customarily do. Got a lot we are going to uh, get to uh, today, including a fascinating piece by Walter Williams. We'll talk about that fairly soon in the program. Very, very interesting piece. He's an eminent economist and has a profound piece about the a column about the choices that face America. And essentially, he says the choices that we face are the choice between a peaceful separation or bloodshed. That's where America is at today because of the polarization of the political views and the way Americans view their government and what's been done uh, to our Constitution by those that have political power. So I'm going to read through some of that. We'll take some phone calls on your reactions to what Walter Williams had to say. Now, before we jump into all that, we'll get you the update on Obamacare, some of the um, fiascos that are already starting to happen. Day two, people already are finding they can't fill their prescriptions. And nobody, in fact, at this Kroger pharmacy was able to fill their prescriptions because of Ob Obamacare glitches. So we're going to get into all that stuff as the program develops. Now, in my reading through the scriptures, and I'd encourage you to go to our website, afa.net forward slash pray, afa.net forward slash pray, we have a scripture reading and a prayer for every single day of the year. The prayer is fresh. The prayer is written based as much as possible using the very words of scripture. So we are praying God's word back to him with the prayers that are on this website. These are the prayers that I post on our Focal Point Facebook page every day, but you can go right to the afa.net forward slash pray uh, webpage, bookmark that, and every day you can have a fresh passage of scripture to read and a fresh prayer to pray for you. And you can make the, the target of your prayers as narrow or as large as you want. A lot of times when I pray this prayer in the morning, I'll pray specifically for my immediate family. And then when we pray here on focal point, I enlarge the, the scope of the prayer to include every man, woman, and child in the United States. You can make the target for your prayers as narrow or as broad as possible. But I think it's critically important that we go to prayer Every day, that's the way that you can do it. That's something that you could think about incorporating into your life here in 2014. Now, my reading is taking me into the book of Exodus. been reading through the story of God delivering the people of Israel from bondage. Got into Exodus 15, the end of 15 and the beginning of 16 today. This is where they have been delivered from Egypt, delivered from bondage. God dried up the sea so they were able to cross on dry ground. The waters collapsed on the chariots of Pharaoh. Not Pharaoh, by the way, but it was on the, the chariots of Pharaoh and all of his armed men. They were swept away when the waters collapsed on them. The people of Israel went through on dry land. God established a pillar of fire, cloud of fire between them, between the people of Israel and Pharaoh's troops so they couldn't pursue them while the ground was dry. They had to wait until that cloud lifted. Then they went, then the waters came, boom, they were towed. So they've been delivered from bondage. They're now in the wilderness, and almost immediately they begin to complain about the absence of water. They grumbled against Moses. What are we to do? So Moses does what you do when you're in a jam and you don't know what to do. He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood, a log or a tree. Moses threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. So the people grumbled against Moses. Moses took their complaint to the Lord. That's what you do when people complain against you. You take that complaint to the Lord. You ask the Lord to give you some help in dealing with that. Moses did not lash back at the people because when he got these complaints, he took them directly to God. I remember the one time he did lash out at the people who grumbled against him was when he was prohibited, forbidden entrance 
to the promised land. So it's very, very important if you're in a leadership position, it's very, very important that you not lash out at the people under you. Even when they are complaining against you, you take their complaints and you take that to God and ask him for help and he will help you just as he helped uh, Moses. And the Lord made for them a statute and a rule and there he tested them. This water business was a test. If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians for I am the Lord, your healer. I am your uh, Yahweh Rapha, meaning from the Hebrew word uh, to heal. So he says, look, this is a, if you will be careful, and this is a, a promise to them as a nation. Remember, this is not just to them as individuals, but a promise to them as a nation that if you will give ear to my commandments, if you will diligently seek my face, if you will obey my commandments, then you will, your health will be better. Your health will improve. Your national health will be better than the health of the people that you left behind. And we see this time after time. If you compare the health of the American people to the health of every third world country in the world, you see the dramatic uh, longevity differences because we as a nation have historically honored God and his standards. Now, chapter 16, don't have time to go into it, but this is when God gives them the gift of manna. They grumble about the food. They grumble against Moses. Moses goes to God. The people are complaining they've got no food. And God says, I am going to rain down bread from heaven for you. So then when I woke up in the morning, there was this thin wafer-like frost. It was like frost that covered the ground. They had to gather it early in the morning because it would melt. Now notice, God said, look, I will rain down bread from heaven, but you have to go get it. You have to work for it. You have to gather it. I'm not going to make it magically appear in your cereal bowl or in your oven in the morning. You've got to go out and gather it, and you've got to get out there early and gather it because when the sun comes out and the heat comes out, it's going to melt away. And so they did that. God says, look, I'll provide a double portion on Friday night when you gather or Friday so that you will have enough to eat on Saturday. If you try to collect more than you eat, it's going to rot. Don't try to save it. You got, In other words, you have to depend on me for what you need every single solitary day, day by day. We depend on this manna from heaven. Now, the word manna, by the way, is a Hebrew word meaning what is it? I don't know what, what, what it'd be like for you, but I'm trying to think of what it'd be like to eat for 40 years, eat something called what is it? What's for breakfast? What is it? What's for lunch? What is it? What's for dinner? What is it? I don't know. Anyway, let's go to, uh, let's go to prayer. Lord God, we confess that even after we have received a work of grace and power from you, we can quickly find ourselves in a place where we feel spiritually dry and wrestle against bitterness of spirit. I pray that you will protect us against grumbling against others and that you will cause us to imitate Moses' example and cry out to you. I pray that you will replace bitter waters with sweet. I pray in Jesus' name that even when things are unsettled in our lives, we will listen carefully to your voice and do what is right in your eyes. May we pay attention to your commands and keep all your decrees. Please protect us and our families from illness and disease. Lord, we are prone, just as the Israelites of old, to grumble against even good leaders you have placed over us. Enable us to recognize that you are testing us to see whether we will follow you.